Hi, my name is Laura Stinchfield and I'm a professional pet psychic. Rodney's not, not gonna take my board home, is he? <laughs> I can't try to do something better because I'm always being watched. I have a secret little skate park that's like below sea level, and that's where you say that because he's done things there that I can't believe he's done. Clearly, something's going on. <laughs> it's freaking me out because yeah. he never sits still. He's I didn't want to tell you that, but yeah. that's weird. It's pretty special like, to be able to do that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta. It's really something. My hair stands up. I actually speak to them in words, though they can't understand the English but they pick up on your thoughts and your feelings and the images in your mind. Oh! This gift is a responsibility. And my responsibility is to share the details of the thoughts and feelings of what the animals are sharing with me. I always knew what the animals were thinking and feeling. I just didn't know that everybody else didn't. So it was actually really hard for me growing up because it was at a time where people smacked dogs for going to the bathroom in the house or um, beat horses for not jumping. And it was hard because I would know that the horses weren't jumping because they had a hurt hip. <laughs> he, he's saying, um, I don't really like this kind of work. Convince me why I should do it. This is Sandra D. And um, we've had her for 18 years. This morning she lost the use of one of her front legs mm. and can't stand up today at all. We know that a goodbye is soon. She said she doesn't want to get worse. She doesn't want her organs to start to fail. And she feels like that's happening a little bit because she's having a burning sensation in her stomach. She's having a burning sensation because of the steroids. They put her on stomach medication oh. to try to help that. How do you feel about Sandra? I want Sandra to stay. I know. You want her to stay? Oh. She wants Griffin to know that he's such a great kid. What she wants to say um, to her sister is that she thinks you're such a little sassy pants. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks you're such a good mother and that sometimes you should look in the mirror and say, I'm a good mother and just know it. It's really nice. She said that she got so much worse from yesterday to today, and she is scared that it's gonna be worse tomorrow. Mm. Now, I can't diagnose an animal, but I can ask the animal, how are you feeling? What makes you feel better? Where do you have pain in your body? What's the level of pain? When you talk about a pet psychic, you know, for me, where, where I come from, how I was raised, whatever, my reaction is, you know, come on, you gotta be kidding me, pet psychic? Like that's, um, you know, and I'm the Easter Bunny. But all of those feelings, all of that hesitation and, um, and skepticism just fell away immediately. And I didn't feel myself needing to probe her for more, uh, more proof. I just felt faithful, which is uh, not a trait that's natural for me. Being their voice is a really, used to be a really hard thing for me. I used to be really shy, you know, and the animals have made me to be someone who is their voice and will stick up for them and will tell people, you know, what you're doing is wrong and you need to change. He also gave me like he went up like a cat stand or something at one time. It looked like he said he had something that he could play on where he could climb and he doesn't have that anymore. Actually, he just got it fixed. <laughs> Men are always like, can you read my mind? Like some people get like really worried that I can read their minds and they'll like leave the room 
where they'll start like holding their head all the time. Oh, so what am I thinking? What did I have for breakfast this morning? You don't know? Aren't you a psychic? <laughs> Like, people expect me, because I'm a pet psychic, to be, like, all-knowing, like I'm supposed to know everything in the universe. Even if they're skeptics, they can't stop listening.